Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back if you're new here. My name is Bella and today we are back in the basement. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the all elusive poppy that so many people have such a hard time growing. I feel like it's pretty high on the list of things that a lot of gardeners just can't seem to get right no matter what they try. I have 100% been one of those people. Poppies are one of my absolute favorite flowers. So as soon as I started really sinking my teeth into gardening and created my own garden, I knew that that was something that I absolutely had to figure out and I definitely failed quite a few times but I found an absolute tried and true method that I think you're gonna love. It's so easy, especially if you live in the Northern Hemisphere. This is something that you can still get done at this time of year, so stay tuned. I'm gonna teach you all about it. Even if you don't have any association with poppies in the garden, I think that poppy seeds are something that we all know and love for good reason. Poppies produce so many seeds. They're very small and they shake right out of the pod super easily. And so what this means is that poppies often self-seed and grow in the same spot the next year. There are perennial varieties of poppies, which means they come back every year in the same spot from the same root structure. And then there are annual poppies, which means that they don't come back every year in that exact same plant, but they do self-seed and start new plants the next year. They are capable of self-seeding, but this doesn't necessarily mean that that's gonna work, so you don't wanna rely on that. But I wanna introduce you to a technique called winter sowing. So there's a few ways that you can look at winter sowing. Basically what you're doing is trying to mimic the way that the plant will self-seed in nature by itself. That doesn't always happen for whatever reason, so this is just a great way to ensure that you'll definitely get germination the next year. So a lot of people will sow their poppy seeds directly onto the ground or even if there's a little bit of snow in the fall or winter time. They just broadcast them wherever they want them and they'll probably come back the next year. But what I like to do is a little bit more controlled because so many months go by between the end of summer here and springtime when these things start popping up. And I change my mind all the time with where I want things to be in the garden and how I'm sort of planning out next year's garden design. And so I don't really want those seeds holding me down in one spot from months ago when I planted them there. So this is super easy, but you're gonna need a few supplies. Aside from poppy seeds, the first thing that you're going to need is a plastic container of any kind. If you look up winter sowing online, I think the most popular way to do it is in milk jugs. I've done winter sowing in juice containers, salad containers, any plastic container I can get my hands on, huge water bottles we're doing some in this year. I'm really experimenting with different shapes and sizes this year to see if it makes much of a difference, but this is what I have on hand right now in this room. So this is what I'm gonna show you this process with. So it's about maybe three inches deep. Make sure that the lid can come apart easily. If you're using something like a milk jug or a juice container, you need to cut about I would say like three or four inches from the bottom. Just cut around that with a knife and leave about two inches uncut so you can easily prop it open and closed and then you're gonna duct tape it closed. And discard the lid because you don't need that because what we're gonna be doing next with this is creating air holes. So the next thing that you need is a knife or I mean if you wanna get really fancy with it, you can use like a soldering awl or whatever it's called. I don't need to do that because this plastic is very thin. So what you're going to do is on the bottom, let's take the label off. So what you're going to do on the bottom is poke some holes in there for drainage. And then on the top, you're going to poke holes as well so that airflow can get through. Now, like I said, if you're using a juice container or milk jug, then you just want to take the cap off of it and discard that and leave it open outside. And that's going to give you a nice amount of airflow going through there. So essentially what this is doing is creating like a little greenhouse. So the air can come in, it creates condensation on the inside from the cool snow. I'm not a weather science person, so I don't know if this is exactly right, but however the condensation is created, that's what keeps it moist inside. So you don't have to worry about watering these. It's the most low maintenance way to plant. So let's go ahead and poke the holes in these. I'm just doing a few. That first one went really easy, the next one did not. I'm not being super precise about this at all. It's just really like whatever the knife 
patches on this. So you can see I've just punctured this a few times on each side. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, just enough drainage that it doesn't get waterlogged. And so then you just wanna open up a few holes on the lid as well. I recommend doing this on a flat surface, but just for the sake of getting this point across, just as big or small as you can get them, just so that air can get through. Okay, our air holes are in there and no stab wounds. Now we can discard the knife because we do not need this anymore. So you don't have to cringe at my knife skills anymore. Next thing that you need is just some basic potting soil. You don't need seed starting mix for this. I've found that potting soil works perfectly fine. So we have our potting soil now and you're just gonna fill this container up. Keeping in mind that the root structures of these plants by the time you plant them aren't gonna be very deep. So this isn't gonna probably get root bound. You don't really need that much soil space. I've found that like they can't really possibly use more than like an inch and a half to two inches. So this is also nice because it doesn't use a ton of soil. I'm just gonna break up any of the little clumps that are in here and kind of even out the soil level. The other thing to consider about the soil level is that you are gonna have to be getting in and taking this out of this container come springtime. So that's another reason you don't wanna to go too overboard with your soil level, just cause I find that makes it a little bit more difficult to like pull this out. So this is looking good. We just have our soil in there and now you just wanna moisten it completely. Uh, this is a new soil bag, so it's not hydrated at all. Usually we would dump this into a tub and kind of make sure that it's nice and moist before it goes in here. But it doesn't really matter. You can just mist on top of this. It's totally fine. This is a fantastic contraption. This is a continuous mister. So you just pump this like so and then mist. Okay, final step. Let's talk about possibly one of my favorite things on the planet, seeds. You have endless options when it comes to poppies and you also have endless options when it comes to anything that you can winter sow. There are so many flowers and vegetables and herbs out there that this technique works for, but I thought I'd focus on poppies for this one because it's one of my favorite plants and it's notoriously difficult for people. I just want to emphasize how economically um, perfect <laughs> this kind of project is. Poppy seeds are something that give you back a thousand times what you put in. So just for a few jugs of this specific poppy variety last year, I got back probably two to three times this many seeds. So you can see this is like quite literally thousands of seeds. I harvested them out of the pods in the fall and they were just endless. So I'll be interested to see if these pop back up in my garden, but I've already winter sowed a whole bunch of these seeds. The next thing that I want to talk about is the bulk barn. So this is just your generic poppy seed that you can buy at the grocery store, at a bulk store for baking and things like that. I sowed a fair amount of this last year already and I still have like a ridiculous amount and maybe paid like $5 Honestly, I think less than $5 for even more than this seed. And if you're curious about what these seeds produce, because I had no idea what they would end up looking like, they're these really gorgeous, like kind of spindly, pale purple and white poppies that are like single petaled and just so delicate and beautiful. So I would really recommend just going to your grocery store and trying this out with poppy seeds like that. And this would be a really adorable flower for like, if you like that kind of cottage garden sort of style or mixing them into an herb bed or something like that, I just love. A few more varieties that I'm growing this year that I'm really excited about are California poppies or mission bells. I absolutely love those really punchy, deep orange tones in my garden. So I'm really excited about that. Another one that I've been looking at for a really long time and I'm excited about See if this works. This is a perennial variety and it came with a absolutely tiny amount of seeds. So I'm just crossing my fingers. They were quite expensive for the amount of seeds that were in there. But that is an oriental checkers poppy. I just love the way that these look. I think they're so stunning. The black contrasted with the pale pink is just 
so beautiful and I think the blooms are quite big as well which is very very fun one of my favorite varieties that I grew last year was Lauren's dark grape and I got these seeds from Renee's garden I loved these I interplanted them with chamomile and the contrast between those two was just so perfect another thing that I really love doing with poppies is if you grow garlic I love to interplant my poppies in amongst the garlic. Garlic is quite a strong, straight standing up plant and poppies are quite spindly and breezy so the garlic acts as kind of a nice stake to sort of hold the poppies up and I think it looks really cute together. Shirley double poppies are always beautiful. Hungarian bread seed is another one that we're growing this year. I'm trying to think of some other ones. Honestly, once you get into the world of all of the beautiful poppy varieties. Oh my god, peony poppies. Just go on Baker Creek seeds and go to their poppy section and your mind will be blown. Okay, but now that we've talked about all of your seed options, let's actually get to sowing them in our little greenhouse. I'm gonna do some of these purple ones because I don't think I've actually sowed any to go outside yet. All you wanna do is just grab a pinch full of seed and broadcast it across your soil. You probably can't even really see these seeds, but I just took maybe, maybe a teaspoon. I'm gonna do a little bit more, just because I love these poppies. So in terms of your seed spacing and all that, if that's a concern for you, you have to remember that you're mimicking what happens outdoors and nature does not space seeds. So I don't take this too seriously. This is very much the style of garden that I like. It's just survival of the fittest. Whatever makes it, makes it. I'm not gonna stress about spacing things out perfectly. So in this case, I have a lot of seed in here. So I just try to think of, okay, how many seeds would naturally be in a few poppy heads that would fall over and self-seed. And that's kind of just how I come up with that amount. They're not completely covering the surface of this. Like it's not so much that you can't see the soil or anything. Not every single one of these might germinate. They might all germinate and you'll have this massive carpet of poppies. And honestly, that's gonna be absolutely fine. Again, you have to remember that all this happens in nature and everything is a learning experience. If it doesn't work with a certain spacing this year, try it again differently next year. That's the amazing thing about gardening you will always, always, always be learning. Okay, so now all you have to do is take your lid, stick it on, simple. I like to take a few little pieces of duct tape just here and here on either side, just to make sure that that's super secure outside in case there's any crazy wind storms or anything like that. But other than that, this should be perfectly fine. Go plop it outside. If you have snow where you are, plop it on top of the snow. It can naturally just melt down to the ground as spring comes, or if you have a spot that's like a little bit less <laughs> snowy and like undulating. Our snow in our backyard right now is all over the place. It's like two to three feet in some drifts. So maybe avoid a space like that, but you don't want this to be under cover of any sort. You want it to be open enough to the elements that it can naturally get enough air and moisture inside. But other than that, there's no real like rocket science to this. Just place it outside. If you don't have snow, that's totally fine too. These do not need darkness to germinate. Anything that you winter sow, again, you have to remember that nothing in nature gets covered in soil when it's planted. I could be wrong about that, but just imagine a seed falling from a plant directly onto the soil. All it needs to do is make contact with that soil and it's going to germinate seeds want to grow so you're totally fine don't cover this with any soil leave the seeds on the surface just like this place it outside and watch your poppies grow you will be shocked at the temperatures that these can sprout in it is absolutely wild and then in a few months when it's time to take your little babies out of the greenhouse and put them in the ground i would do this when they're about two inches tall maybe. It's gonna help if you have some sort of like knife or spatula to kind of just plop them out from the sides. This totally depends on what kind of container you use, but I would say 
don't worry about being rough with them. That's the amazing thing about placing them outside this early from the very start is that you're growing really, really, really resilient plants. They're gonna be a lot more hardy than things that you start inside because they've just been exposed to the elements. So don't worry about being rough with them. The thing that I like about this method too is that you sow the seeds so densely that it doesn't matter if you lose a few. I tend to just kind of dig my hole into the ground where I want to place this and these kind of come out in like um, like a block sort of so then you can just kind of rip off a hunk of soil and stick it in and smush the dirt around it. It's really really simple and you don't have to be delicate with them. So this is an amazing amazing beginner technique. I can't recommend it enough. I'm going to talk about just a few more varieties that I love doing this with. A lot of the wildflower mixes that you'll find out there are really great for this because again these are things that naturally self-seed and are easily sustained in extreme weather conditions. So any of those, I got a really nice one from West Coast Seeds that I loved last year. I think it was a butterfly blend or a pollinator blend, something like that. In that one, the bachelor buttons did amazing. Those are already sprouting outside. They've been sprouting for like almost a month now. So they're super, super cold hardy. Calendula is a new one that I'm trying this year. Chamomile I'm trying this year, so I'm really excited about that. Oh, Larkspur is another, I think, notoriously tricky one to germinate for people. Winter sow it. I have Larkspur everywhere in my garden now. I'm not getting rid of it. It's started germinating on the mulch paths in my garden in January. It is so resilient once it starts self-seeding. So if you can mimic that process with winter sowing, you're gonna have more Larkspur than you know what to do with, which is never a bad problem. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helped you out and kind of demystified the poppy planting process and just winter sowing in general. This is a really great thing that you can try out anywhere from, I don't know, I would say like January through till March if you live in the Northern Hemisphere. So try it out, let me know what you think and give this video a like down below if you enjoyed it, if it got you excited to grow some things. Subscribe if you wanna see more gardening content from me and I will see you back here next time.